I've seen a lot of big schools of crappies. This is definitely a new personal best for me. <laughs> Literally 80 feet of crappies. Almost nervous. <laughs> this is why I always say like, drill, scout, look. Don't just set up when you find a pot of five fish. If you're talking deep bass and crappies, you're gonna know when you find the mother load. I think it's safe to say we'll probably set the house up right here. <laughs> what are the odds I can get this thing through the hole and have it not wrapped up? Yes, dude. It's a good one. Too. Oh man, I just got that biggest 16th ounce tungsten mongo jig with a chartreuse plastic on, dirty stained water. Dude, if that's setting the bar for today, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Let's set up that house, get some heat. Still trying to set up the house here. Had to get one. <laughs> Wait till you see what I caught this on. Nice. What is that? Oh, did you hand tie that? Uh, Leave it to you. I like that. Don't even need bait. They're biting good. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 all right, all right. Yikes. That's a good one. A couple good ones. Got him. Here we go. It's on and popping. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to break down my three favorite crappie baits, three different categories of baits that you can use to catch crappies anywhere and everywhere through the ice. I don't care if it's shallow weed fish, if it's like today we're fishing deep basin fish, these are three baits that I just have tied on no matter what and we'll get the job done. So let's dive right in. Look at them all migrating over to you. <laughs> yeah, wow. there we go. <laughs> so number one, small tungsten, four millimeter, five millimeter, depends on the brand if they go by millimeter or size. Uh, for me, it's the biggest 16th ounce tungsten tubby or tungsten mongo jig. Mongo for plastics like today, because it's got a one sized up hook and a little flat portion on the bottom so the plastics sit up there nice. And that 16th ounce size, the biggest size, whether you're fishing in shallow weeds or deep basins, like we're in 40 feet today and it's still big enough that you can get it down there to the fish fast enough. But even up in like six, seven, eight foot weeds, it's still a nice size for crappies and profile and even bluegills too, but just a universal fish catcher. Euros and wax worms on the, the tubby and uh, your plastic of choice on the Mongo. All right, dropping back down there. Oh, I rolled them <laughs> right over. Did you see that rod tip? Yes. Not good. So it's just super universal because you can use meat on it, you can use plastics, but it's the biggest thing is it's a tiny little compact treat. So no matter what kind of mood those fish are in, even if they're super neutral and negative, they'll eat it. And what I do is I just sit there and I always wiggle it in play. <laughs> oh, I missed them. What I do is I never let that bait Scared stop that moving. So I don't care if you're in six seven feet or you are in 40 feet or 20 feet or whatnot if you stop moving no matter what your bait's going to be spinning around from line twist so just that rocking and rolling motion where the bait is just sitting in place but kicking keeps it from spinning and twisting in front of those fish we call that the spin of death and a fish is not going to want to eat that bait when it's sitting down there twirling unnatural so just keep that cadence hopping and moving and when i see a crappie on the graph slowly rise up that cadence so i keep that little tiny hop that little tiny kick and as the fish is coming up i'm slowly rising like i am right now to just kind of play that cat and mouse and pull it away from them a little bit Ooh, he's I gonna eat, did he eat it? He ate yeah it. Yes. just i watched it so i rose that one rose maybe three feet up out of the school 
and just a real slow cat and mouse to get them to chase and depending on the day you got to play with how how high their ceiling is and their floor is you know you'll get to a point where oh, maybe four me. feet high they don't want to come any higher that's a good one you know maybe four feet up above the school is kind of their ceiling and they'll stop chasing you there so you just got to figure out on the day how high you can get them up and where that kill zone is versus where they'll put on the brakes and go back down and if you guys are curious about what kind of defense he is playing, he let that fish <laughs> swim around my line. I'm looking at the live scope and I just see my jig going up and no fish. Real cool. That's why I thought that was going to be like a 13 incher because I had a little, a little I, side drag. I started pulling back and that's when it came <laughs> yeah, off. The oh, it's getting bigger. It's getting bigger. <laughs> kind of interesting. I dropped this down right away and first three fish that came and looked at it just smacked it. I've had eight other aggressive looking fish come up to it and they're just swimming right by it so which maybe is, not a color thing maybe not a size thing just who knows at this point it's so funny how you can switch baits and then the fish just all of a sudden are in a right mood again yeah nick talked about it the other day right exactly just making that switch they're just crushing like a tungsten or whatever and all of a sudden you get turned down by three four you drop down a little jigging spoon and they fight for it just something different which maybe it's time to make a switch to number two i'm gonna keep the hand tied to him though oh i'll give this last one one more shot because he looks pretty hot to trot i like that come on i'm gonna need to send you home with about 20 little jigs and put your fingers to work my fingers hurt <laughs> well, your back's about to hurt because my sled broke down <laughs> yeah i just got shut down again it's kind of funny to me anyway that what we consider to be a big crappie bait in the summertime versus the wintertime. Yes. It's so strange. I was thinking about that this morning, just tying on and getting ready and like we've got all these glorious little hair jigs and even the small ones. I have crushed crappies on the ice on little hair jigs, but everybody leaves them at home until spring and then right. nobody throws on their tungsten in the spring. Or their chicken spoons, you know? It's just so weird how. But at the same time, you'll catch them on number five jigging wraps and yeah. number five ripping wraps and stuff just fine, you know? Right. They're coming to look at this. It'll be interesting if you get hit your first drop changing. To be fair, we aren't using live bait. I don't know whose idea that was. <laughs> I don't know if it was anybody's idea. <laughs> I think it was, we both had a lack of the idea. We just got out here and we're like, huh. Hope they're biting. <laughs> Eat your food, Tina. Get this big one coming up. Oh, it's all over you, right? That one? Oh. There's a big one looking at each of us. Got him. Got him, yes. What did you just switch up to? Just a different color of hair? White? A uh, different head and then just kind of a, a lot of synthetic, almost like a big minnow tie. I'll show it to you in a sec. Sure. Just interesting that you switch up after getting turned down 10 times. Right. And then you catch one in about a minute. Ooh. Not a bad one. Not a bad one. Look how <laughs> thick its back is. Yeah, but this little guy. Nice. Yeah, it is a little minnow profile. Ooh, there goes a rod. Which is so weird because these are like, these are bug eaters. Soft mucky base any bottom and you had a little red one on like a blood worm looking right you switch to a minnow profile and it's like i'm gonna eat that just something different in their face all right changing it up going bigger got turned down 10 times now after whacking a few right in a row so we're gonna go to option number two what do you got for me chicken spoon baby it's one of those things that you gotta have tied on or you can have tied on going to any lake anywhere shallow or deep that's definitely my favorite when they're just super bitey yes get down there asap oh, that or a jig and wrap remember when nick was retying for seven minutes i almost feel bad for razzing him but it had to be done boom denied that big fish on bottom Oh, look at that big boy. I just bottom. got smoked by that nice one on the spoon and I felt
felt my hook like tear. Oh, he hit it again and I he dropped it. If it's the same one. Yes! Nice. Just switched up to a, a spoon, a VMC Flash Champ spoon. It's a big profile. It's the, that new Glow Tiger white color, and I actually have a big red mustache worm on it, which is mind blowing that I wasn't getting nice. bit on that little tungsten. Turned down by 10 fish in a row. I go to a big spoon with an equally big plastic because it's got a side profile, kind of like a, like a wacky worm for bass, if I could get it out of its mouth. Like, look at the size of that profile. And it turned down a tungsten that was smaller than that plastic. So yeah, number two, jigging spoons. Super versatile, great for bigger than average fish if you're dealing with like a lot of little bluegills or a lot of little crappies. And it's something that I've really started using more, even shallower and even for bluegills, which is interesting because you just don't think, you know, spoons, big, tiny mouth, small fish, but I don't know, I was up north last year with uh, John Holmgren actually, and he was whooping my butt using like up to 8 ounce spoons, but 16 no ounce and 30 second as well, but he even had an 8 ounce spoon on it one time. Caught like an 11 inch bluegill. I'm using my tiny little 3 millimeter tungsten and ice flies, like all oh, these big pressured fish, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, and he whooped my butt on these pressured fish with big spoons. Like. What? You know, you just think like pressured fish, big smart ones, I need the tiniest little thing I can get away with, but some days they just like that big profile. There that you go. That came so fast at it. That looks like a good one. There's only three fish on the live scope right now, we're running out of fish. When there was like a hundred, <laughs> yeah. if not more. Is that a good one? I don't know. It's not a bad one. That's a good one. Yeah? kidding I'll me that's that. like a 12. ate it good engulfed it <laughs> nice fish buddy look at that big bottom hugger there was one earlier man it couldn't have been a up. crappie this one looks like a crappie but oh he's racing up the school is coming back come on baby eat it eat it eat it eat it eat it how eat is he it? not oh, yes, yes dude, dude. <laughs> on the spoon dude look at that school coming back yes they're trickling back in baby this look like a nice one. It's fighting, like, it's a fighting one. like a nice one. I think it's another 12 or... This is wild. It's not always like this. Oh yeah. Not as big as yours, but... Yeah, buddy. Awesome fish. Love it. Look at where that spoon is. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me see. That one shallot too. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> like where's the flyers type of gun? Got it. Poked right out. Look at that school coming back. That one came flying up off bottom and hit that. Man, I should have switched the spoon earlier, but it's just like, why would they eat that instead of the little tungsten? Dude. Two different attitudes of fish down there. Nice fish. Love it. Firing back down. So I work this spoon a little bit different than the tungsten, but one same thing is you never stop moving it. And I would say that goes for any time that you're not using live bait. You know, especially if you got minnows or wax worms or whatever, there isn't that taste on there. You don't have that minnow constantly moving. You're the one who needs to make that thing trick them into being alive. So always rocking and rolling it. But one thing that I do a little bit differently with the spoon versus tungsten is I'll do little bigger hops and uh, let that thing kind of flutter down. So I'll do six inch hops, even a foot hop kind of get aggressive with it almost like I'm walleye fishing to see if I can get those fish to turn and come in close for a look and then once they come on it I'll slow down and do the little wiggle where the spoon's not really moving a whole lot but the treble is swinging and so if you've got a plastic on there or euros or wax worms the spoon's kind of just sitting there teeter-tottering a little bit but that treble's swinging back and forth and uh oh now you're just getting ridiculous over there I'm about to double up I think they're eating but I definitely like to get a little bit more hot to trot, a little bit more on those spoons, working them in those six inch, eight inch, 10 inch hops and letting that thing kind of flutter down. And you'll see like, I, when we put the bigger baits on and that spoon, those fish were off of live scope 
and started sliding back in and I I mean I'd like to think that having the little bigger profile had a little something to do with that you know every once in a while you see them get called in on the drop mm -hmm. you see that more with big baits and you do small baits you know absolutely they can see as well as they can see down there but a bigger bait's just going to get them almost more curious you know even For if they sure. see that small bait they're more likely to come over to that big bait what's kind of cool too about the spoon that a lot of people don't think about is it's got that big broad side right so they can see it from the side big profile come up and look true crappies usually feed up typically most of the time and so when they're coming up underneath that that spoon is really thin so when they're looking at it from underneath about to eat it it looks like a smaller profile which is something that i never really thought about until i started using a little more for bluegills too and it's like look at the size of that spoon yeah but they're coming from up underneath it and you're playing cat and mouse and having them chase up and it probably looks about the same size as that tungsten then so i haven't personally used a lot of spoons for crappies myself i have but i just feel more confident going smaller right what do you start with color color wise uh it's the same as tungsten for me well pretty much if you've got white red and chartreuse you've got every color you sure. need you know and uh for me it depends on water clarity uh chartreuse today the reason i was using chartreuse is it's this is dirty water and i switched over to the white nice. spoon same thing dirty water something with a little more contrast a little brighter but white and red just white red and chartreuse seem to catch them anywhere sure and I thought this was going to be a red bite, honestly, because these deeper basin fish, soft bottom, are eating blood worms, which is the red or whatever, which is why I put a little red mustache worm on there. Sure. But it's just day to day, hour to hour, you just got to keep playing all the time. I definitely think it helps too when you, with one or two other buddies and you can kind of experiment, you know, not everybody's using the same thing. And... 100%. It's like trolling crankbaits. You don't put two of the same thing out ever unless you are getting your butt kicked by the guy who has something tied on. Sure. Start with two completely different profiles and different colors. And, uh, you know, spoon starts catching them versus the tungsten. Then is it the color? Switch to a red or a white, whatever match color. And if that doesn't do it, then you know it's that profile. Size and profile, yeah. The school has slid away. There's only one fish on our graph now in about a 20, 30 foot radius. So it seems like a really good time to switch to option number three. And that is a small number three jig wrap. Will you tip that with a plastic as well or no? Uh, you don't normally need to. Sometimes I'll put just a tiny little, you know, like I'll even pinch off that tail on a mustache worm or whatever. Sure. If I've got one that's tore up and I'll put that on the treble. You could put a euro or one waxy on the treble, but really, if I need to put live bait on my jigging wrap, then I'm not gonna use a jigging wrap. Sure. So the reason for the jigging wrap for me is just the quickest, efficient, most efficientest <laughs> way to get back down there and catch another fish in a school if they're roaming around like this. The mostest efficientestest. Yes. And what I really like them for as well is if you're fishing outside and you're just trying to track them down, you know how hard it is to get a tiny tungsten jig to punch through even the smallest amount of slush in your hole? It is a nightmare. And Good even point. the spoons. I mean, the spoons are bigger profile, but they're pretty light. I mean, this weighs four times what a spoon will, even though it's just a number three. And number three for me is the best all around size for crappie. Ice fishing, I mean, there's times where I wouldn't mind going to the one size down. Um, and I've seen people catch them on fives, but three is just kind of all around. Or if you get turned down, then you need to go to that spoon or, or tungsten. But it's like the whole hopping outside, track them down, get down there as quick as you can. And uh, same with you, if you just have a fired up school of fish, even if you're not trying to find them and you're on them, but they're fired up, there isn't much they can get down there quicker. <laughs> like you see how fast that Look thing that. dropped down. We had a fish right on the edge. Saw you come down. No and way. He is going to pound that thing. Get ready. No way, that was man. So fast. You can't even make that up. We didn't even have a fish on the graph, 
and I dropped down this bigger, brighter profile, and that thing showed, oh, it just fell off. Dang, Looks like a good fish. That was a big fish. Well, test that theory one more time. Yeah. It just came out of nowhere, but you got that big profile, and I had that, like, I think it's called Green Tiger or Green Glow, but same thing, like I said before, this is dirtier water, and I don't know, I like those chartreuses, whites, glows, and that kind of off-colored water. Anything to just Ooh, get big fish on bottom. A couple fish coming in. There Ooh, they yeah, are. Coming Three, to the jig and wrap. Three, two, one. Yes. Dude, the bigger profile when they're not showing up on the cone. Ooh, there's a good one waiting for me. Must sink faster. Must sink faster. That looks like a good fish. I'm just taking it easy because the jig and wraps have such tiny little hooks. Oh, ah, nice one. Nice one. Absolutely. He was looking like a stud. <laughs> I love that. Dude, and I just, I don't know, if you had that little tungsten down there right now without a single fish on the graph, I don't know that you'd get them to come flying up like that. Right. Like that was just two fish that came in out of nowhere. Now a fresh school, or if you've got a big recirculating school, some I'd almost, right. I almost think it doesn't matter sometimes. Yeah. But when you've got like that same little chunk of fish migrating these through. Are, these are just moving so slow, but a lot of the times they're roaming that basin almost in a circle. Where it's like by the time you would move the house 50 feet away or 100 feet away or whatever, you end up, you know, like if you're hole hopping outside and it's a warm day, you end up in the hole that you started in. Mm -hmm. Right after you hop 10, 12 different holes, then you catch them where you were. And I wish that was the case, but these things are just kind of hovering around this area. We just are crawling out of three days in a row of negative 20s and finally have a above zero day. <laughs> A little windy but it is yeah. way nicer outside but I, I would think man you get two three consistent days and these things will be a little bit more uh a little bit more friendly yet and we're also out here in the middle of the day which is good point we haven't talked about that. super interesting that there's a bunch of permanence hard houses out here and there's nobody at any of them other than that one way on the other end the mm -hmm. rest of the other 20 or whatever are empty and you know you get to about four o'clock that hour sunset window, everybody will start riding their wheelers out or snowmobiles out to the, the permanent and firing them up. And by then we're gonna be out of here and have our fish totally. for fish tacos. And it's so funny that, you know, if you're fishing a community hole or something, you don't have to just show up for that sunset bite. I mean, some of the best bites I have for crappie specifically are like noon to two middle of the day. There seems to be a really good bite window. And then you get about an hour too low where it's slow. And then you get to that four or five o'clock darker, you know, sun setting window and they start biting again. But you don't have to just hit that flash bite window. You can sneak out midday when nobody else is around and do pretty dang good. <laughs> you and I, crappies through the ice, we have done better from 10 to two than we have in the morning, than we yep. have in the prime time evening. 100%. I'm not saying the evening isn't prime time with the whole throwing right. quotes up. I'm just, it just gets I've hard. Better too, days midday. Yeah, and you're yeah. not you're competing with less people, less noise. There isn't ten snowmobiles and four wheelers zipping around, riding right. around, augers drilling four holes per fish house. I mean, just watching on live scope, you can see those fish just then they're boom, they're 50 feet over there, mm. and then that guy comes to his house, and then they're 80 feet that way. And uh, I mean, even right now, even though there's nobody at any of the permanents, we're still several hundred yards away from the closest one. I mean, we're probably pushing a quarter mile from the far end of it, and uh, I just don't like to fish by other people. And it, and then if they do start coming out. A lot of times they'll push fish our way. Just fish that are in that area. I mean, there's a reason they're there. It's probably the best area on the lake, right? But you can still get to kind of the first edge or structure or something around the edges of what everybody else is trying to be in. Whether it's a depression or a literal hole basin or a hump or whatever. It's like, I always look at like, okay, this is probably the best spot. That's probably where everybody is. But like, sure. where would those fish be pushed off to? Well, the best spot may not be the best spot, just the most obvious spot, right? 
and like the whole wheelhouse brigade. I feel right. like they love going to, ooh, a 48 foot hole. I'm gonna go right in the middle of the deepest spot of that hole. And that honestly is rarely where right. you and I have set up. No, yeah, they always seem to like cruise those edges. And you get the whole, well, there's two permanent houses there. It must be a good spot. I'm gonna drop down right next to them. I mean, a lot of the times it's just, or a plowed road where someone can get to. Right. So you don't necessarily have to set up right in, right in the town. I'd prefer not to. Well, and that's another nice thing too. Like old buddy Brett here just got a snowmobile trailer and a sled this off season. He had one years back, but um, the mobility that we have, especially after getting that, what was four days? We got what, 24 inches of snow yes. or 22 inches of snow. She's nothing fancy, but it's honest work. Honestly, I'll just say I got it for 1200 bucks, which uh, it's already been worth that the six times I've used it this year. It could get stolen just, tomorrow. And I would, and it'd be worth it would have been <laughs> worth it. I'd, I mean, I wish I could go out and buy a $15,000 decked out one or whatever, but dude, it's like, I don't care if I can only go seven miles per hour, if I can get to places where you can't for the truck and you don't want to walk, that 1996 Polaris Indy uh, Classic Touring will work just fine. 97 Pantera. Yes. <laughs> Thing runs like a top. It doesn't have any purple or teal on it though. I don't know. <laughs> Come on in, baby. It's coming in quick. Got her. Yes. Nice. So I don't work a jig and wrap like a jig and wrap when I'm ice fishing, especially for crappies. It's not, it's nothing like open water, big four or five foot rips or even two foot rips. That's a nice a really one, good one. <laughs> yes, look at Thicky Magoo. <laughs> oh. Scarfed it. So I will do like maybe a six inch hop, 10 inch hop, but that's only a fish are off to the side and not really, not really here and looking at it. That's a good one. And as soon as I get them to start coming in, coming towards the bait, you can tell they're interested. Then I'll slow way down and uh, it's basically a rocket in place. And if you've ever watched one on an underwater camera, or if you haven't, I strongly, strongly recommend it because it's crazy how much that bait moves when you don't think it is. What I thought would be little one, two inch movements using three pound mono in 40 feet of water and it's like that bait's probably not even moving right right underwater camera it was like psh, psh, dart dart oh. dart and uh i basically had to stop and just hold my rod tip and try to keep it as still as possible and just the micro movements from you shaking and up and down uh <laughs> you know, i got that giant hair jig on oh no and breath's doing a sound bite while i'm missing fish after fish but that that jig wrap is constantly kind of moving and sliding and just like this one's coming up again oh why wouldn't you catch oh, it that's the one i missed did you really yeah. you want to see what he looks like i'd love to <laughs> but it's crazy how much that that jig and wrap moves down there without having to do a lot of movement just because of that fin and the way it glides out to the side so i just barely wiggle my tip or just kind of do like slow lifts and down but you're not really going to get a crappie to eat it when you're popping it and it's darting and chasing in the winter especially just because they, they don't move that fast it's weird like until they do right until that, they do <laughs> you get one that's just in a different mood and they fire in and you can't even see your bait in the back of the throat oh all over it and do the same thing with the jig and wrap is spoons and tungsten just a slow rise trying to pull that bait away from that fish just if it just if you can get them chasing a little bit even if you're rising you know this fast but it is going away from them it just seems like you have a better shot at getting and that's why them. sorry to interrupt that's why i was missing fish a <laughs> little bit bigger it doesn't look like a big profile out of the water but once that gets in the water it opens up pretty big. It's nice to have fish on the graph we again. Just got that school. <laughs> oh, I shut down. So another thing that I'll say that is really important with the jig and wrap because it falls so fast and is so heavy, but it's something you should consider even if you're using tungsten or spoons is 
when that bait's rocketing down to bottom, stop it five, six feet up above those fish and then slowly fish it down. Good too. And a lot of the times they'll come flying up then, but I've noticed if you let it just crash right down into them, they'll spook out of there. Um, or they'll just get negative and be like, nah, that's not right. It doesn't look natural, but stopping just five feet above them and slowly wiggling and fishing it like it's something dying, sinking, dropping. A lot of the times they'll come right up and intercept it. Oh, I was hoping he was going to leave you. Be done with you and come to me. <laughs> You're such a good friend. There he's going towards you. I'm going to do like the comeback call. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a goose hunter. <laughs> he's going away. Oh, he just turned. What's he doing? What is he building in there? Oh, you're about to get schmuckled. Toot him, Jacob. Do that thing you do. What are you dancing that jigger <laughs> app right over? I could probably get it to glide right over to your hole. Oh, quit steering that thing. There we go. <laughs> uh, I'm done with him. You can catch him. He looks annoying. I don't like him. <laughs> no. We could eat him, though. Oh, man. That rod looks like a lot of fun. What kind of rod is that? It's funny you should ask that, Christian Hoffman. This, <laughs> this is a 44 Ultralight Elliott Evolution Series. And it is legit. As corny as we just were, it is legit the funnest panfish rod I've ever used. It's 44 inches. We're fishing inside of a really big Clam X200 today, so I actually have enough rod room. Surprisingly. But it, yeah, but yeah. especially for outside hole hopping. And as you can see, it's the same rod that I used for the tungsten, the spoon, the jig and wrap. It can fish anything and everything. Crazy soft noodle-like tip. All of the backbone in the world, I've literally used this as a dead stick for walleyes before. It's just, it's so fun. And to not have to be hunched over your hole, sit back and rip them up. Mm -hmm. Love it. And then no matter what, I'm fishing for for panfish. I primarily run three pound Suffolk Advance Ice Mono. Just a great all around size for bluegills, crappies, no memory, little bit of stretch, but half the stretch of traditional mono. Doesn't freeze up. I know I'm beating a dead horse because I say it every time, but it's just, it's cheap and it works good. So why mess with it? And I mean, we're in 40 feet of water today. Ideally you'd have maybe braid to feel those bites, but I don't know, you get more bites with the less visibility, it just fishes cleaner and smoother. And without that stretch, especially for using a, a jigging spoon or a jigging wrap with those tiny little number 10 or whatever treble hooks they are, you tear so many on crappies. Sure. And having that little extra cushion, I think is important. And It's a fun rod, I've used it like one time. <laughs> I took it right back. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Anytime he gets a new rod or something like that, you got to catch a fish on this. Yeah. I'm not even done reeling it in. Yeah. <laughs> moin. 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 Well, you got something sneaking in on I your know. lap there. He's coming in slow. Uh, the reel is an Okuma Samar C10. The sexiest cheap reel ever. Uh, that black and red combo. The C10 is just a great size for panfish. I can't remember. I think they're like 50 bucks. I feel like they should be... Maybe they're even less cheaper, than that. cheaper, I think. But they're better than a $50 reel. Yeah, they feel, feel like, yeah. like if they listed it at $79, bucks, i would buy it and be like, this is a good reel. But it's a price point even cheaper where it's like, oh, there's fish down there. It's like, okay, I'm going to buy two of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what I did. Oh, that's a nice mark. He went right by me. I didn't drop down to him. Oh, what is he doing? I never know what he's doing. Ooh, bottom. Yeah. Flying up. Two of them. I was ripping this thing so hard. Oh my goodness. You better hold on. Oh, ho, ho, that was so cool. Yes. That's the small one. Yeah. And scarfed it. Huh. Are we gonna go back to back on the J rap baby? That thing hit it so oh. hard. Bonk. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> that was so not even a giant, but it no. just smoked it. Demolished it. Catch this fish. I'm gonna He's steal bored it from with you. me. Look at that. If I have ever been told I need to change baits, that is all the proof I need. What are you stupid or something? Come on, man. Coming back. That's a nice fish. I wants to see how big he is. Stripping line like a couple of fly guys. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's just the super quick, efficient way to get crushed. <sighs> Beat it. To drop your bait down in little six inch increments without having to open your spool. Oh, this thing is full. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Chicken spoon, I was going to say, how do you not have him yet? Oh, I think he rose up about two feet, and I didn't know I had him. Oh, you woke that other guy up. Look. Yes. That a boy. Went back to the chicken spoon. It's game on again. I think we're going to wrap this up right here, because you're probably sick of hearing me talk. This is a good one to end it on, though. It feels, yeah. That's a nice fish. Nice one. Look at where that spoon is. Engulfed. These fatties are so fun. But these are just three baits, three categories of baits, and three specific baits that I use anytime I go crappie fishing all winter long, shallow to deep. They will catch fish anywhere and everywhere. I'm gonna sign out now and help <laughs> this boy with his slab. I like crappies. Oh. What a breath of fresh air from walleye fishing. <laughs> I love it. Oh yeah, by the way, any fish that comes out of that deep water is going to die. But the good news is, they're also going to fry. Thank you.